How do I start my own business? Being my own brand would be totally legit. I want to be the next Gary V. My dream is to be on Shark Tank. I'm just gonna Google it. I mean, I'm awesome at social media. What could go wrong? Oh my God. Hello everybody and welcome to Learning Curves. We are in episode 20. I'm so excited. <laughs> we made it to 20. That's awesome. Today I have a special guest, Karina Brazil from Revive Canine. She owns a company that trains dogs. I know a lot of us have dogs and we get them sometimes and they're out of control. We don't know what to do with them. And you want to call Karina and she can come in and help <laughs> calm your dog down and teach you how to teach him a few, her or him a few tricks or two. So we're very excited to have you on our show today. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. Yes. The other great thing about Karina is she also runs a business professional group called Tampa Bay Women's professional networking. And if you're a woman and you're interested in getting some networking, you can reach out to her Facebook group, which is TB Women's Professional Networking on Facebook and ask to join. It's a great organization where women can get together and support each other and their businesses and also hopefully maybe even do business together. So she's going to talk to you a little bit about that today. And also she runs a charity called candidcanine.org where she sets up fostering for for dogs so we're going to learn all about that today so thank you so much Karina for and joining us today can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do absolutely so um, I am originally from Portland Oregon I moved down here in 2011 after I went to boot camp for the U.S. Coast Guard um while I was up in Pensacola, they stationed me at a search and rescue unit where we did small boat operations, so search and rescue and law enforcement. While I was at the unit, we had a station mascot. Her name was Gibbet. She was Aww. a black lab. <laughs> She's awesome. Um, she was a little rough around the edges, so she did need some work, but she actually got me started with dogs, and so she she... She was there for people in some of the worst times of their lives, and it was just really inspiring to me to watch her where people were at the station because their children were missing or something like that, and she was able to bring a smile to their face, and just our little ray of sunshine running around. So it was really awesome to watch the work that she did. So when I had actually got out of the, the Coast Guard, I found a service dog organization to volunteer with. Um, so Q Boots, that's my now seven-year-old Australian Shepherd. Uh, he's <laughs> he's my, sitting here with us he, right now. Yeah, he's with us today. Um, he is kind of basically a therapy dog. Um, he's my demo dog. He doesn't necessarily have any certifications, um, but he does a lot of work on his own as far as coming to sessions with me and helping with dogs that need need that extra support um he's very good at coaching dogs through certain situations if they are, are iffy about whatever they're experiencing in their life so he he does a lot of work as well <laughs> on top of what what i have to offer so he's awesome oh, um that's great yeah <laughs> we started revive canine in 2019 um i had jumped around from a couple different companies to as a dog trainer and I decided to go off on my own and <laughs> so Revive Canine was born um, a service that not only provides a initial training program but also does continued training opportunities as well so we do monthly group sessions for our clients that have graduated um, to continue applying the training that they've learned during their program and then also refreshers for life. So if they feel like they are uh, needing some practice in certain areas, then we're always there for them. I love that. I think it's important that uh, you put your dog through training. I know you met Lexi. <laughs> she probably needs to go back to training. <laughs> I need to go to one of your sessions sometimes. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she was a little wild puppy um, when she was little. So I had to, I had to get a dog trainer to help me with her. And it, it definitely helped quite a bit. But I think yeah. the ongoing training is something that is important. You want to tell me a little bit about? Um, 
the different types of trainings for dogs and, and how it helps them. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So um, my experience, I went from one end of the spectrum as far as dog training styles go of positive reinforcement um, all the way through learning about e-collars. Um, and an e-collar is basically how it's explained um, is that it's a TENS unit for dogs. Um, so we use the what's called, we call it the lowest level, the working level that the dog feels. Um, is that like a shock collar? <laughs> so there's two different types of collars mm-hmm. so the, of, as far as electronic collars go. So you've got your shock collar that you can buy from most most pet stores carry them. Um, they've got levels basically zero to ten. Whereas the e collar, it's muscle stimulation, tap tap tap. Hey, I'm talking to you. Usually, what happens is that tap tap is less pressure than we're when we're applying our leash pressure. So if say the the dog's got a collar on or a harness and they're pulling the heck out of you, that pressure ends up being more pressure than the e-collar that we end up using. But because they are not conditioned to the e-collar yet, it allows us to apply a new type of pressure and then also condition it in a positive manner. Um, So we are able to use those. So as far as Revive goes, we are balanced trainers is is what it's Mm -hmm. called. Um, So we use all all areas of learning theory. So between your positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment, um, and a lot of people don't realize that when you break down the quadrants, uh, some people give the definition of those different quadrants as like, oh, you use a prong collar or or you're punishing your dog, blah, blah, blah. But they don't realize that when it comes down to learning theory, the idea isn't tools the definition isn't described as tools it is applying something applying pressure to increase a behavior or applying pressure so and that can be pressure with with your body so like getting closer to the dog it can be applying leash pressure it can be taking away leash pressure it doesn't have necessarily anything to do with a tool being the definition basically so the idea that we have as balanced trainers is to come in and apply whatever the dog needs. So as far as our training style goes, it's custom to the dog. We don't do any sort of like cookie cutter, like this is what we use on every single dog because not every single dog needs that. Just like people, everybody learns differently. Yes. So being able to cater to the individual dog as well as the individual owner. So if somebody comes in and they're like, you know what? I don't want to use an e-collar. It's like, okay, it might take a little longer, but it is definitely doable. So being able to offer a service that, you know, we take into account how the owner feels and their wants and needs on top of what the dog needs, being able to offer a service that accounts for that. And, And that's something that's very important to people. So that's something that's very important to us. So that's that's kind of how our approach works when it comes to um, our, our training style and, and that sort of thing. Do you go to the person's house and kind of get to know the dog beforehand to see kind of their characteristics and maybe where they might need some help? Um, in the beginning, I did a lot of evals, but now, I mean, I've been doing this for seven years now. Mm-hmm. So at this point, I've kind of seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> and so I can kind of, I just go into the first session. And I'm like, okay, this is what we need to do. So as far as an eval goes, most of the time it's for the comfort of the owner, just to get to know me or and get to know my team. Um, and then we just move forward from there. But generally, I don't need to do a, a meet and greet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So. When you've uh, come, you know, you meet the dog for the first time, like, what's, what's the, because what's the worst behavior that you've seen that you've been able to overcome and train for the dog not to do that any longer? Uh, I mean, we work with aggression cases, so right. <laughs> we've gotten, or I have personally gotten some dogs where the, that first, that initial meeting is like, I want to eat you. I don't want you to be around me. I want you to go away. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> like, I don't care. What you, I have no, I, mm, nobody. We're going to be best friends. <laughs> and they're like, no. And then they're like, okay, you're kind of cool. <laughs> That's generally how it ends up working out. So with a dog that tends to be aggressive like that, how do you get them to stop? Generally, it's confidence building. 
establishing boundaries. Uh, a lot of dogs that have aggression issues, it really depends, right? Mm-hmm. So just like with, with people issues, dog issues kind of follow along the same patterns, right? So when it comes down to it is proving to them that, no, you don't need to act this way. I'm going to show you the new way. So giving them those coping skills and allowing them to learn in a new productive environment and showing them that, I don't know why you want to act like that. You can act like this instead and it will still benefit you. Right. (laughs) So um, proving to them that those old behaviors aren't acceptable and we need to establish new behaviors. Um, And once they realize how life is when they don't have to be worried or trying to manipulate the situation with their teeth, that's when you start seeing those better behaviors. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You can take an aggressive dog and make those changes. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times Mm -hmm. it just ends up being insecurities. Like, okay, I learned that I can manipulate the situation with my teeth. Oh, never mind. I don't have to do that anymore because you're showing me this whole new life. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, and they they sure are smart. They can figure things out pretty quickly. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) I love that. At CEA Marketing, we take your business, your passion, and your why, and we sell it. If you're unsure where to start marketing your company, CEA Marketing is here to help. Our team at CEA has tons of experience and top-notch training, which helps you take all the stress and confusion out of marketing your own business. After years of working with large companies like Pulte Homes, the Outback Bowl, and Metro Places, we guarantee the successful implementation of a marketing strategy. Um, you um, you mentioned that um, you worked for a couple other companies yes. before you started your own company, which I think that's really smart that you went and got that experience first before jumping into something. Can you tell me a couple of things that you learned from the companies that you worked with that you bought into your business and maybe maybe a couple of things that you learned that you knew not to bring into your new business. Oh gosh. <laughs> that doesn't put me on the spot at all. No. You don't need to, you don't need to mention right. names. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think the biggest thing that I wanted to offer people is that continued training opportunity and continuing to be able to give people that option of you know, like just because you've graduated doesn't mean that your training journey is over. Your, you will, your dog will always be learning. You will always be there. There will be some level of consistency and boundaries that you need to establish and continue forward. And so being able to be in situations that are promoting that. So being around other dogs that have gone through the same training experience and are on the same level. So like we do pack walks. So that's one of the things that we do for the continued training opportunities. And that's on a monthly basis. We do different activities. Well, we'll go downtown and we'll walk around and there, of course, are lots of distractions, lots of other dogs. Sometimes they're crazy, sometimes they're not. Kids, uh, motorcycles, bicycles, scooters, like all kinds of stuff. And so those types of distraction allow the dogs and the owners to continue having that confidence and continue going into those situations, um, whereas before that didn't happen. So six months down the road... I would get a phone call saying, hey, um, my dog forgot everything. Like, I need a refresher. And so then, you know, I don't mind doing refreshers, of course, but it's like, okay, well, we could have been practicing all along and you would have never had any sort of regression because you had that, you would have had that opportunity. So that's been the biggest thing that our clients have have uh, appreciated. And at the same time, if a dog has gone through another training service, um, if they have a diploma or they have proof that they've gone through that other training, then we do uh, invite them into our training club as well. So it's open to anybody, even if you have a trained dog and you just want to one, meet like-minded people that are also dog people and you don't necessarily need a whole training program. I love that. <laughs> Cause that's so, that's so smart. <laughs> 
Because you're right, because a lot of them, like, okay, you know, you're going to pay for the sessions and go through however many sessions it is with your dog, five, ten, whatever that yeah. is, and then you're done. But a lot of those training sessions, you might be in there. I know this was true with Lexi. There was, like, maybe three other dogs, four other dogs in there, and sometimes it was just her. Yeah. So probably part of the reason why she gets a little aggressive when other dogs are in her territory um hasn't really learned to you know it's okay to share your space kind of thing um which being part of like if I had been in a walking group Mm -hmm. with her she would probably deal a lot better with that that socialization yes absolutely Mm -hmm. instead of her she just gets completely annoyed Don't, you know, don't be doing this. Don't sniff my butt. I can sniff yours, but you can't sniff mine kind of thing. And we we start out all of our training (laughs) as private sessions. We don't Mm -hmm. do group sessions um, for a reason because, Mm -hmm. one, we want to control the chaos. I like having the fact that it's just, like, if it was you and I. It's just you and I and your dog, right? So you have all of my attention. You're not competing with five other people and their dog. Your dog's not distracted by the other dog's. If yeah. your dog is distracted by a dog passing, then we just grow our distance and we get to a point where your dog can handle it and we don't have to necessarily worry about those distractions. But at the same time, being able to work through those distractions at the dog's threshold. So being able to respect the fact that, oh, 10 feet is too close, but 50 feet is fine. Okay, perfect. We're going to practice at 50 feet until the dog can handle us being able to close that distance to get closer to that distraction. So building the owner's confidence while also building the dog's confidence at the same time. Right. So how many dogs usually walk within your group? Um, so because I have, so I have two locations. I've got one up in Pensacola. Mm-hmm. Um, our Pensacola location has been going on, or we started Pensacola in 2019 and a lot of my clients from my previous experience got grandfathered in and uh, they were able to start with social club as well so we'll have anywhere from five to some I mean we there was one walk that we did which was open to the public that one was Um, we I think we had like 25 dogs and each dog had one or two people with them so it was great it was just a giant dog parade walking down downtown Pensacola (laughs) So you offer like uh, dog walks in the cities where people can join in. Yeah. And what a great way to promote your business. It just ends up being a giant commercial. <laughs> that is so, it's so awesome. That is so smart. I love that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And at the same time, when people, when we do our public walks, um, people joining us and maybe their dog's a little, little iffy while we're walking, I'm able to give them some tips and tricks as far as what can help them in that situation. Or you know, if they have their, their leash set up kind of off in a different leash and collar setup would be better for them, then I can um, give them that advice ad- as well. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's really neat because I, I think there's they'll be with these other dogs and they'll see the dogs that have been through your course and all the well behaved and then they're going to have the you yep. know one that might be a little more out of control exactly be like okay I need to sign <laughs> up there or we'll be walking and people will be sitting down at at their meal and they're like wait wait what's this I I I have a dog I need to do this too mm-hmm. and so we have somebody that kind of stays behind and gives out cards Hands while we're up. walking oh my. <laughs> I love it. That is smart marketing. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's fun. Like, I, yeah. I, I enjoy it so much. And it's a great way to meet people. I mean, I'm new here. So yes. um, community is something that we built in Pensacola. And so I've done the same thing here, uh, just bringing people together. Um, I, also, I also run a pet industry networking group that is on Facebook. So if anybody's in the pet industry and would like to get together, that's it's Tampa Bay uh, Pet Industry Professionals. And um, we've got over 100 just people that have pet businesses or involved in some way or another. And we just did a network group meetup at Pups Pub in Tampa. And we had like 25 people show up. It was awesome. That's yeah. great. So yeah. anything from like I sell dog collars to... yes homemade pet food to Uh dog trainers charities yeah absolutely wow we have several of those um we've got like board members and and that sort of thing so it ends up being kind of like a 
a family, so I like to plan events. So we did like a pup crawl. We've done two pup crawls downtown St. Pete, and those have been awesome. Um, we've had like 15 to 20 different businesses involved in those. And so like as each stop happens, we've got vendors and stuff set up at each stop, and they've just been a great way. And then we also have rescues that provide dogs to walk with us. So adoptable dogs are walking. And oh, if you don't have awesome. a dog, we have one you can walk. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and fall in love with and adopt yourself. <laughs> that is so smart. Oh, so I, I just love really, it. I really like <laughs> creating opportunity, like even not just for myself, but for other people. Like it's just mm-hmm. awesome to watch somebody's business go from startup to, oh my gosh, you're, you need help. You need somebody new. Like that's awesome. How can we help you? You know what I mean? Right. It's a great way to get everybody to know all the different types of uh, services that mm-hmm. are available for for dogs and bringing everybody together. Yeah, I I love that. So how can I find out about your like if I wanted to bring Lexi on a pet war or a pub a pub crawl with my dog? Yeah. How do you how do you find out about that? So re, that would be Revive Canine Dog Training Tampa Bay. So for this location, that's the name on Facebook. Okay. Um, we also have a website revivecanine.com. But I don't post events there a whole lot. Mm-hmm. So Facebook is generally, in the, the event section, is generally the best way. Um, we won't have another pub crawl until it gets cooler. I'm not, I'm not doing a pub crawl while it's warm out. The dogs won't last. <laughs> yeah, they don't really like that too much. No, they get worn <laughs> out. So uh, we'll wait till the, the weather cools down again. And we'll do, we did a, a Santa pause. And so everybody dressed up like Christmassy. And then um, we did a... St. Patrick's Day, and so everybody was a leprechaun. It was awesome. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I've seen some of them too, where the um, at the end of the water season, the water parks open up the park to the dogs before they drain the, yeah. the water parks. I know we need to do that. Yeah, we need to create an event for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they reach out to your local water park. They are always looking doing uh, events like that. Um, you need people, I'll bring people. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Well, I think those are really some great ideas that you um, utilize for your for your business. You utilize the Facebook group. You have events that you offer that the public can join in on. You have a monthly club to keep clients engaged and paying that membership fee on a monthly basis keeps that actually income coming in. Right. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't charge a monthly fee. I do a one time it's, it's $200 to, for an eval to make sure that your dog is ready for that. Because I've had some people that contact me and like, my dog's trained. It's like, well, we need to work on this a little bit before we jump into group because right. I want you to, I want you to not be a distraction. I want you to uh, really utilize the fact that everybody in, in the session is going to be under control and it's going to be a positive experience for everyone. So um, making sure that everybody's on the same level, if we need to throw in a couple lessons before you get that invite to the social club, we can do that. Um, but the idea is to come in where the dog is at a level that can handle a large group of dogs all in the same space. So it's like a $200 fee to yep. see if the dog's ready, and then after that they're... And then they're invited, and then they stick around as long as they want to. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoy it. It's another way to yeah keep everything going and keep keep uh, your audience engaged and probably even get more referrals out yeah. of every, uh, that as well. Absolutely. Great. Well, I loved hearing about your business, but Thank I'd you. like to hear a little bit more about uh, the uh, Candid Canine yeah. uh, charity that you run. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So actually, it was a it was a gift. the The whole organization ended up being a gift from another trainer who was moving out of state. And instead of closing it down, she asked if there were any trainers that would be interested in taking it over. And I was like yeah, please. (laughs) I'll do it. So it actually started out as a dog rescue that focused on canine nutrition. Um, When I received it, I was just starting up Revive and uh, didn't have a whole lot of time. So it kind of got put on the back burner Mm -hmm. for a little while. Once things settled down a little bit, myself and my trainer up in Pensacola decided, okay, well, we don't necessarily have the capability of doing intake right now, 
but we have the knowledge and experience to share with others. So we've kind of turned it into more of a education service for the time being, um, where on the foster side, so we will set up events and recruit fosters and then we'll train them to be successful fosters. So we go from somebody that, you know, is very green when it comes to dogs and they don't know a whole lot. And so we'll take them from the beginning and put them through as far as they want to go. If they want to just do beginners and advanced, perfect. Or they just want to do beginners and they just want to take puppies, then that's awesome too. So it's however far you want to go. So we go beginner, advanced, behavioral, medical. Behavioral fosters are typically the people that have been involved in the dog industry in some way Mm -hmm. because they need to be strong handlers and be able to handle the dogs that have behavior issues like aggression and reactivity um, and be able to provide the dog a lifestyle that promotes success. So allowing that and then we also work so we work with fosters we work with rescues Um, we do have a rescue and shelter transformation program um, where my trainer up in pensacola she will come to the shelters and implement a training program to the staff so not only are the the fosters training the staff every and every time they interact with one of the dogs it's for a reason so outside of just oh let's go for a potty break like they're handling the dog in a way that it's like okay this is how you respect your leash this is how you sit like they're they're taking the dogs and holding their hands through these experiences so that they show better to the public when people are interested in coming to adopt that's smart. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then we also work with other trainers. So if a trainer wants to get involved with rescue and they don't really know how, or yes. they, or they don't want to get involved because maybe they don't want to feel like they're going to get taken advantage of or something because there's so many dogs that need help. So it's like, Hey, can you help with this? Can you help with this? Can you help with this? So allowing to have a little bit of structure going into it where, they are going to have time for their clients and then they'll also have it's like okay i can help with two dogs a month or something like that so giving them a little bit of a buffer uh to provide a service to dogs in need um, while also being able to keep their schedules manageable um so that's been that's been a lot of fun it's it turned into something way bigger than we thought it was. We, we just planned on doing an education service. So it's just like evolved into this <laughs> much bigger thing. <laughs> but wow. I love it. It's awesome. Doing um, so many things on that side as well. Yeah. And smart all the way around how you're going about it. <laughs> and I have a two-year-old, so that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you almost need a training service to learn how to deal with a two-year-old. <laughs> she bad. <laughs> yeah, I know. But she's a little dog trainer herself. Like, watching the way she interacts mm-hmm. with dogs, like, she just mirrors what I do. So if she'll approach a dog, if they're in her face, she's like, no, I don't want anything to do with you. But if, as soon as they start to respect that space, she's like, oh, you want a treat? Okay, sit. Like, I'm not going to give it to you for free. You're going to work for it. Right. <laughs> it's awesome. She's great. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I love that. Kids are, kids are awesome. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, two-year-olds can be a challenge sometimes, but they are super cute. <laughs> they are. She's awesome. She's going to take over the world. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> she's like her mom. She will. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about this Tampa Bay Women's Professional Networking Group that you have going on. Sounds really cool. Something that yeah. I definitely want to be a part of. Absolutely. So, well, it was one of those things where I was watching on another group that there was a, a group of women that were commenting on a, a random post, and somehow I ended up watching the comment section where they wanted to make a group for women that are are professionals in their industry, whether they're in a career or they own their own business. Um, And they just made the group after the conversation, posted it on the comment section. So I added myself and we went from, we started that or they started it. I wasn't involved in the planning process for for a little while. They started it in November, and since November, we now have, I think we're at almost 1,500 
local women, local business owners, and uh, women that are, are leading these really awesome careers and providing a way to get to know each other because a lot of times women that are, are super involved in what they're doing have a hard time meeting other women that are doing it because everybody's got different schedules and, you know, they're working, they're, they're hustling, they're working really hard on what they're doing. So um, providing them a, a safe place to, one, get to know each other, and then also if they need help with something, they can go and make a post like, um, yesterday somebody was looking for a hairstylist and so they'd made the post and then 10 other women said oh I use this lady she's awesome it's just another way yeah. to help each other out with mm-hmm. personal experience so we also are working on getting our 501c3 paperwork so we will be a charity where we'll basically be raising money for other charities um, we do events every month so second thursday we do a women's meetup networking event the last one we did was at ulele it was awesome we ended up doing this huge raffle we had i think we ended up having 24 women donate to the raffle so we had 24 different prizes ranging how fun wow (laughs) ranging from like gift cards of different values to somebody did like 25 units of botox it was insane wow (laughs) that's a good one (laughs) i know right so it was just another way to promote these businesses and bring some light to what they do and then also just have a really great time and get to know each other. So Yeah, it's a way to meet some new friends and support mm-hmm. each other in their businesses. Yeah. It was awesome, I, and it is awesome. I really do enjoy it. Um, we plan on doing pop-up events and allowing the, the different ladies to host their own basically and excuse me so during those it will be like hey I have a a brick and mortar let's let's host an event I'm gonna have this lady uh, bring her charcuterie and then this lady bring some drinks and it'll just kind of be a collect a collection of different businesses that are creating this really great experience and then also getting them some exposure so it's been it's been an awesome ride. <laughs> love it. I want to do one of those here at Second Soul Studios, by yes, the way. Yes, <laughs> I know. I would love that. that would, that's such a great idea. Yeah, I love the idea of the pop-up event that's really popular yeah. these days, and it gets more than just the one company involved because when Absolutely. you do have an event, because I know I have several yeah. at the studio where we're putting on the event ourselves, but when you have you know three or four different businesses coming in, it also makes it more interesting and fun because you have more than just one thing going on um, and you can learn about other companies. Yeah. So that's really smart. I love that. Definitely. It's been a lot of fun. I've met a lot of amazing women. It's, it, I was, that was one thing about moving here that I was worried about. I'm like, I'm leaving my friends. I'm not going to know anybody. And then I get here and I'm like, this is great. <laughs> yep. If you don't know anybody, start a networking group. <laughs> I know, <right>? Smart. <laughs> I love Absolutely. It. Yeah. Now you have 1,500 friends that you never knew before. so many. <laughs> <laughs> That's really smart. Well, I'm actually looking to, uh, and forward to getting involved in your group as well. And I know Megan's been... Um, involved on the Facebook page and she says it's it's amazing all the all the women that are on there yeah so it really is yeah good job with that thank you yes shout um, out to all the ladies yeah <laughs> want to join that that's that Facebook group again is TB women's professional networking and that's on Facebook I am going to put um, all of Karina's links for her business um, revive canine.com on the um, will be on the YouTube channel and the notes section along with um, the notes on the podcast uh, as well RSS feeds where you can find the link to her website the link to the um, TV women's professional Facebook group and also where you can find out more information about candid canines.com or dot org sorry candid canine.org if you're li- if you're possibly interested in fostering a dog. So lots of great information. But before we leave you today, we thought that we could um, have Karina teach us a couple, uh, just show us a couple dog tricks. Um, or not dog tricks, but some like behavioral, a couple of different tips that you can practice with your dog at home. Absolutely. 
Um, I think one of my favorite, it's a, it's a game actually mm-hmm. that we play and it's called lazy man recall because you can do it from your lazy boy. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So bring either high value reward. So, I mean, you can use cheese, you can use hot dogs, something that you can throw. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, if your dog really likes their kibble, you can use their meal. Like that's totally fine. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take whatever food you end up wanting to use you're gonna take it take a portion and you're gonna toss it usually i start with like maybe two or three feet in front of me dog goes and gets it as soon as they pick it up i say come and then i offer another treat and then the next time i throw it a little bit farther dog goes and gets it this is something you can do in the yard too it doesn't have to just be inside as soon as they pick it up i say come as soon as they come back to me i give them the treat and i'm going to do that for several repetitions and i will do it many times because what is happening is i'm conditioning the recall i'm conditioning the word come right mm-hmm. and so what's going to happen is the dog's going to realize like oh well when you say come something really great happens so i'm going to come back to you every single time yes that's exactly what i want <laughs> that's that's all i want <laughs> just don't run from me like hey this is really great come to me so um, that is, that's a really great tool to have, especially, I mean, you can use it on any dog. It, it, puppies, t- puppies do great with that exercise. Um, old dogs do great with that exercise. It doesn't really have an age limit. You can, I mean, even if your dog is trained and you just need to practice recall a little bit, that's a really great tool to have in your back pocket. Another one that we use is called restaurant. This, re- this one is more for dogs that don't have a food motivation and you want them to. Um, and restaurant, the idea is to teach them that when food is presented, that this it's their job to eat it, right? Mm-hmm. And so restaurant, I've got my bowl of food. It Usually I will just have it made however the, the dog typically eats it. I will present the meal. I'm, usually I'm holding it. Present the meal. If the dog has interest, perfect. If the dog loses interest, I'm going to put the meal away till next meal, right? And so one, the food is coming from me. Two, the food is, is he's getting the opportunity to eat. So if you don't want to eat it, that's fine. I'll put it away and you can try again at lunch or dinner, or whatever mm-hmm. the next meal is. And so as you do this over a series of days, the dog starts to learn that, oh, okay, well, food isn't necessarily on that luxury. And, and it's not something that you have to do indefinitely. It's something that you can do in the meantime while you're trying to get the dog to pay more attention to what you're asking of it. Because if you don't have the ability to get the dog's attention and keep the dog's attention, then then you're 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 just fighting with the leash and it's just not enjoyable for anybody. So we want it to be a positive experience. We want the dog to truly enjoy what we're asking of it. And food is food is a dog's love language. So yes, it is. <laughs> obviously, or or even toys. Like if, if a lot of dogs, their their motivation comes from food. If we can get away with it in the beginning, that's the number one uh, reinforcement that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, if a dog likes toys, we can use toys. If the dog likes praise, we can we can use praise. Um, in the beginning, we start with food, and then as we progress, we start weaning off of food and going towards toys or praise because. I don't want to have my dog only listen to me when food is involved, right? right? Like, that's not fun for anybody. So we start with food and then we wean off because we want the dog to realize that, oh, good things happen when I listen. Foods. So restaurant, yep, present food. If interest leaves, food leaves. And then after a series of days of doing that, the dog's interest grows more. And so you will have more positive training experiences that last longer. Oh, that's great advice. (laughs) Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on Learning Curves today. We really enjoyed this, and I think everybody learned a lot. And I know I have a a lot of dog lovers in my audience. So absolutely, thank you for having me. This has been awesome. This is this is the first time I've done a podcast, so it's very exciting. (laughs) Well, you did a great job. You're awesome. Thanks. (laughs) Loved every second of it. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. And don't forget to tune in. And we're going to have all these links on there where you can learn more about everything that Karina does. So thanks for joining us and have a good day. Second Soul Studios is a full service production studio with capabilities for photo, video, podcasting, editing, co-working, and more. Our photo video studio has a number of different backdrop choices and props to choose from. 
we also have a gourmet kitchen set. Or if you're an upstar podcaster, you'll love our four-person podcast studio. So what are you waiting for? Visit secondsoulstudios.com to book a tour today.